Welcome to the Hey Soul Sister podcast, where Mel Histon will guide you through life's big questions and bring you one step closer to doing this crazy journey as best you can. Hey Soul Sister, do you ever get sick of your job or have you dreamt of a complete career change or a life change? In high school, I had always wanted to be a photographer. I actually did photography in year 11. But at the time, my dad told me it wasn't a career, it was a bad move to go down that path. So I ended up going to uni and working in PR and marketing. And then about 12 years ago, I decided to give it a go. So I went out and found where I could do some photography courses, trained up to be a freelance photographer, and then started a photography business, which I did for about eight years. And then went on and started a charity, Got Your Back Sister, which helps women and children escape domestic violence. It has been a freaking crazy ride. (laughs) But I'm not alone. I know so many people who are keen for a career or a life change. That could be you. I'm sure there's many of you listening right now that are looking for some sort of career or life change. But maybe you don't know how to start. Or maybe you don't have the support or family, friends or hobbies to do it. So I have a special guest here. He's going to share with us her incredible story of a career change. Mrs. or should I say Dr. Naomi Finlay. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. Just, <laughs> just say Naomi, hey. <laughs> Want to save your soul? Review us on Apple Podcast. Well, I think it's being a doctor is something that you should be very proud of, so I'm happy to call you Dr. Naomi, or, or maybe I'll just call you Doc. I, only for this podcast. Okay, just Never again. Podcast. Okay, so Naomi went from being a university PhD and senior lecturer... In radiation oncology. Yep, in medical science. Yep. Yes. And then when I met you, reconnected with you about nine or ten years ago, yep. you had become or uh, changed career and had just become an interior stylist. Absolutely. So kind of like you, you just described your journey and how it morphed over time. Mine was really similar. I, in year 11, loved art and tech drawing and woodwork as well as science. And like your dad, I had a careers advisor that said to me, Naomi, clever girls don't do art. And I went, oh, okay, well, if I'm a clever kid, I better change. And I headed down this science track and I ended up working in oncology all around the world and then did my PhD in medical science and then lectured and taught and I was trapped in this science, science world. And do you know what's hilarious? I was constantly studying and constantly looking for a creative outlet. I studied photography when I was in England. I Did you do some professional photography for a while? Yeah, when I got back to Australia, um, so that was in 2001, I actually started a photography business and I did weddings. Um, And it was great. And then I had my first baby and went, wow, weddings are not great with a young (laughs) newborn, you know, because the bride doesn't stop for a breastfeed. Like it just doesn't happen. And so I soon worked out that wasn't a good family fit and still working. And when I was doing my PhD, I actually studied design at the same time. And I, you know, I was always, you know, what's so interesting is it never manifested in the way of, wow, I need a career change. What it manifested in for me was I was continually striving. And so I thought when I got my PhD, I'd totally be happy. When I became a senior lecturer, I'd totally be happy. And, you know, when this happened in my career, when I got a teaching award, I'd be happy. When I secured $3 million worth of grants, I'd be happy. And then I realised that I was hitting all these outrageous milestones at a super young age. So I wouldn't even have been 30. And I remember looking around myself at the university at the sort of the next echelon. So the ass profs and the profs. And I was looking at, you know, not a broad sweeping statement, but many of them and their lifestyles and their connection to the families and the hours that they work for that level of position. And I was like, wow, that's my next 30 years. And so it did that scare you. Yeah, it scared (laughs) the shit out of me. Hey, I really, truly did. There were a couple like there's the amazing Professor Claire Collins. She's a local woman. She's mind-blowingly inspiring and she – she was one of the few, she mentored me for a while. She was one of the few that I looked at and went, wow, you're a woman, you're a mum, you're a professor. Like she was amazing, but she was one, one yep. out of many. And so for me, it didn't manifest that, oh, I need a career change, I need a career change. It just manifested as a constant nagging to be better, be bigger, do more. And then I realised that I just, I had this amazing man, a colleague of mine, his name's John. He's an, a newie boy. He walked into my office one day and he goes, Finlay. I'm like, yes. And he goes, 
what do you want to do? And I went, I'm like, what, <laughs> what do you want to do when you grow up? Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean this afternoon? And he's like, no, no, what do you want to do? He goes, you're not happy. And I'm like, I just want to design and renovate houses and stuff. And he looked at me and he went, go do it. And I went, I can't, I can't. There's no way I could possibly because I'm this and I'm that and I'm this and I've invested all this time and I'm this. And he goes- And probably money and invested money. Money, epic money, epic time, family energy, buy-in, stress, wrinkles. And, And he's like, oh, nothing's stopping you. Just go do it. Yeah, well. And I went, wow. But I went, well, I have a family. I have commitments. I have a mortgage. I have all these things. I couldn't just go do it. But he was the, he was absolutely the instigator of it where wow. he actually, because I'd become so entrenched and trapped by the position, trapped by the money, trapped by the status of, you know, where, what I had become and what I was doing at such a young age. And also by the, I did love what I was doing. I did, I did enjoy it, but I had become cemented by that. And he kind of just took a jackhammer to it. Wow. Which was really cool. Want to fill your soul with more? Go to the sisterco.com. So were you worried about what other people in your world might think? Oh God, yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I hit it. I was like, like under the under the under the table career changer for ages, hey. Yeah. Because no one knew that I was studying and one of my best friends was my boss. He was one of my yep. best friends and I'd known him since I was a student. He was my university lecturer when I was a student. He was my boss. Yep. And he was one of my closest friends and he'd supported me so much in my career. I not only was worried about what people would think, but I was also really conscious of the investment other people had made in me. Yep. And I felt a level of responsibility to them for that investment. Well, and I can imagine that that would be something that a lot of people potentially who are looking for some sort of career change may feel, may go through. I know I was really lucky when I was looking to go down the photography path. My hubby was very supportive, but, yeah. you know, a lot of people questioned why. Uh, I Did you get statements like, um, why are you throwing it away? <laughs> Think of all the stuff you're going to lose. Like they all had, there was always um, – you know, and all of it came from a beautiful place. Yep. Most of it, to be honest with you, came from a gorgeous, gorgeous place. Yep. But it was very fear-driven. There was always a fear word in there. Lose, forget, yep. leave behind, regret. Like there were always – there was always that sort of word in there. Yep. My um, partner at the time was – who's now my hubby – was really supportive as well. But it did take – to be honest with you, it took tenacity, patience and resilience because it didn't – I didn't have the luxury luxury of just going well you know our family has all the money in the world I'll just give up yep. and I'll just start a new career because it takes time to earn money in your new careers it takes time to earn a living and cover your overheads let alone pull a wage absolutely and finding clients oh my if lordy you, if you're starting a new business you have to actually go out there and hustle and find clients that's right yep. and so for me it was about you know there's some, some saying you'll know it you've probably said it to me things happen for a season not a reason some for uh, you know there's, 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 a season, there's a season a reason or a lifetime Exactly. Yes. So I had to acknowledge that what I was about to go through for the next, say, three years was for a reason. And so my late nights, my working all weekends, you know, my putting babies to bed and working, my, you know, I, my my child three and four were co-slept and demand fed, but they also got to wear a Mac on their back all the time, <laughs> you know, because I'm like, wow, that's a really good Mac platform, you know, while they're laying on my yeah. belly breastfeeding. I'm like, I can rest my computer on you so I knew that that what I was going to have to go through for those three years pretty much which was epic hustle holding my day job down because there's a responsibility and a level of respect that needed to be held there and at the same time knowing that no one was going to give this to me and I think that's I absolutely believe in manifesting I absolutely believe in dreaming and I believe in visualization and Pinterest boards and storyboards and mood boards but you've got to goddamn act like yeah absolutely it doesn't get handed to you it doesn't hey yeah so you went from you were university senior lecturer yeah you started um, an interior design course yep your boss or and mate says to you do you know what go and do what you want to do 
what's the next step? Because you didn't walk out one day, I imagine, and go, hey, I've got this super successful styling business. No, absolutely not. So I studied. I then started to, at night and on weekends, frame up my business. So I registered my business and I was basically working full-time as a lecturer and I was working part-time as a business owner. And then once I had gotten, not all my ducks in a row, because I'm an 80% girl, hey, I do not do ducks in a row. I'm like, if eight ducks are standing, even if they're drunk, I'm good to go. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not seeking perfection. You're oh, just like... Perfection is paralysis. Like if I was seeking, like searching out perfection, I would be a university lecturer still. Yeah. I would not be where I am. Do you know what? I was in a conference years ago and um, there was a lady speaking. It was her conference. Her name was Emma Kebbett. Yep. She's a self-made billionaire. Wow. Self-made billionaire. And she said, I only seek perfection 3% of the time. For that reason, if I waited per- for perfection... It would never happen. Sometimes you have to go, this is good enough just to get it out there and to succeed. And you know what? It's a bit like, um, do you remember when we were kids and our parents used to say to us, no one's actually looking at you, don't worry about it. To a certain extent, you know, 97% of the time, no one's actually looking at that finer detail. Yeah. You know, so you do have to forget it. So I pretty much spent um, a good year getting some drunk ducks in a line, you know, getting sort of nearly there and then started to seek clients, started to talk to clients, talk to agents, talk to developers, talk to builders, um, build my network, build my relationships. And it wasn't to a point, I remember I was, um, I was about 30 weeks pregnant with number four. And so I'd actually built a business. I was earning an income. It was on weekends. It was late at night. It was whenever I could fit it in. I was in my lunch breaks, not that they really existed. And then I remember coming home and sitting on the mat, the doormat, and my husband going, oh, oh, he wasn't my husband at the time, but oh my gosh, what's wrong? Oh my gosh, you know, are you okay? Is the baby okay? And I remember going, I can't do it anymore. And I was just to the point where, and that was the turning point where I knew I had to let go of one for what the other one to flourish and I I think that everyone knows in their gut when that is um, so you had to make a choice I had to make a choice but I'd done I'd planned things in place like I'd already built my business I'd already built my brand or building I'd already done outreach I'd already had paying clients which was fantastic and then I got to the point where I'd also been saving so I'd been saving a buffer for that drop in income which happens it is just yep. it's a fact yeah don't they say that it's something like 80 percent of new businesses fail within the two first two years and I remember reading once that that's because people don't plan for the drop in income or they don't have enough capital or cash behind them to get through that first two years when you're hustling but you may not be making that much money. A hundred percent. I'm I always talk to my students, whether it's in the renovating business or in the styling business, I'm like if you think you're going to be pulling like a, even a 40 gram wage in the first six months, you would be one of the minority in the country. Sometimes it takes time to get traction, sometimes it takes time to even get indoors. That is just business. That is not new. That's not because of whatever's happening in the digital world it's not because of the global economy that is just business yeah I can imagine for people out there who are listening to this and they may be looking for the career change the life change it can be really scary it can be really really scary there's been various points where I set up when I said I've got you back sister I felt like I was standing on the edge of a cliff and having to just take the leap but it was really really scary to take that step off and I know there would be many people of you many of you listening who have felt the same way did you feel that oh my gosh you know what I probably feel it every couple of months even from when I started my design business things have evolved so much you know um, and, and if anything, I've stepped into a completely different career, still with um, some amazing design work and some amazing design clients. Um, however, the mainstay of what my business became, which was styling and property staging, um, I've sold that business. So I've actually kind of gone into a third phase of business. And I am only 
18 months into that third phase of business. And so I wake up weekly with that feeling, that feeling of um, all the feelings that I felt when I was leaving university. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? That was such an amazing income. You built up this like eight figure business. That's so cool. Are you an idiot? Have you thought about this? Do you want to go back? Maybe you should just go style somewhere. You know, <laughs> like it's just, it whispers to me a lot of the time. And I have to um, then, you know, recall myself back to the plan because I'm a massive planner. If I have a plan and I have a foundation, I'm kind of like, it's okay. So I go, right, how much buffer do you have? Cool, you've got enough buffer that you can see another 18 months out. Are you living your purpose? Yes. Are you enjoying what you're doing? Yes. Are you earning money from it? Yes. Cool. It doesn't matter right now that it's not as massive as it was. Do you have a plan to get to, to the income that you need? Yes. Is it going in the right direction? Yes. Should I ignore the person on my shoulder? Yes. You know, it's... So from what you're saying, to actually do the job change, career change, life change. First of all, you actually have to want to do it. Maybe have the right people around you, but really you need a plan. Oh my gosh. So they they are three perfect things. You need to have a plan. If you think that you're just going to step out of one business and it's going to be like the movies, yeah, and step into another business, then you will cause yourself so much stress and you'll use so much. I'm a massive believer that like in our in our body, we have energy parcels and we have a certain amount of energy parcels every day to use. It's like cookies, yeah? A certain yeah. amount of cookies we can give out. The amount of cookies or energy parcels that you would use stressing if you didn't have a plan – you would end up with no energy left to do all the things you need to do to build your business because you need energy, you need intensity, you need tenacity, you need patience, you need resilience and they take energy parcels. So a plan and a team around you. You must surround yourself with Soul Sisters. Like you have to surround yourself with that network. Well, and that's something that I talk about a lot is, I mean, people say you've got to find your tribe but really you need to find those people that genuinely want to see you do well. That is so true. Genuinely from their boots with no stories attached for them. They just want to see you be well. I got that from Dr. Phil. Let's get soulful on social media. Search the Sister Code Facebook page and follow us on Instagram. Did you? Years ago I went and saw... I love Dr. Phil. I had a crush on Dr. (laughs) Phil when I had my first child. So 16 years ago, he was really big and man, I had a crush on Phil. Well, I just went and saw Dr. Phil, the arena show. It, it's you saw him live? I saw him live. It was the Dr. Phil arena show. It was then Asa Arena. I don't know what it's called now. Maybe no, I do. Arena or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down in Sydney. And I remember he was talking about these seven things that successful people had or did. And one of them was that you need to have a circle of people around you who genuinely want to see you do well because I'm going to say not everybody is going to genuinely want no, to see you do 100%. well because some people actually want to see you fall on your ass on your face yeah. in the mud because it brings up stuff for them 100% not your story their story and you know one of the biggest things to navigate in this career change is working that out because some people will approach you with true concern with true are you sure have you thought this out and that is from caring they're not all just evil bastards yeah um you know they actually care and part of your job will be working out and processing the genuine concern and taking into account the things they're talking to you about as well as those that you kind of go oh you know what you know what, I'm not sure that they're there to support me the whole way. And yeah. that's okay. I lost piles of friends in my career change. Yeah. Piles <laughs> of friends. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. Yeah, somebody said to me, a wise woman said to me at the time that, um, yeah, people, when you go out and you really go for something, a big change or something that you really want in your life, that it can bring up a lot of stuff for other people because – you may change in terms of your availability or um, your their, their access to you. Um, a whole range of, of um, th- you know issues can come up, and but really it's about they're fearful that their relationship with you is going to change in some way. And do you know what? That is so true. And I've noticed that more and more with my most recent change. So when I went from having a bricks and mortar business as well as um, some online businesses, when I fully stepped into the media space and, you know, when I did changing rooms and location lifestyle and then yes, when we... because st- you've progressed. You've gone from being 
Uni- senior university lecturer to uh, interior home stylist, yep. interior designer. Now you're uh, an author. You you have your Renault TV yeah. show. Yeah. You have your YouTube channel, you podcast, and now you're a TV presenter. So you've had a massive, massive and change. And it's weird, hey. Yeah. But I think what you were saying is it's so, so true – the amount of um, times that I've had, and never from you, naturally, um, <laughs> I've had someone say to me, and it was a lot of it was around ownership, around changing the framework, the availability, or maybe the playing field of our friendships, and it actually makes some people uncomfortable. And so it doesn't mean that I'm not friends with them, that I don't see them, but when I might get a message like, hi, it's blah, I'm, I'm just leaving another message with your answering machine because it's my best friend now, not you, that I go, that's not my junk, that's their yeah. junk. You're right. When we change the balance in some of the friendships that we have, it can cause discomfort for some people. Yeah. So how did you get through that? Because, you know it, because it hurts. Yeah, it's devastating. Yeah. It's really devastating. I'm not confrontational, no matter how outspoken I am. I'm not confrontational at all. So I've never, ever called anyone on it. I've just very much tried to seek to understand. So I'm a massive believer in the iceberg theory that what I see is just a portion of what's going on inside someone's heart, inside someone's soul, inside their head. And so I think acknowledging that it's not actually about me. I think that's the biggest thing. It's not about me. And as a friend, what can I do to seek to understand and support them during this changing time? Because it's a changing time for them too. For people that are listening now and they may be looking for a career, job, life change, what would be some advice or tips you would give them? You know what? When you are chasing to do what you love, no barrier is too large. There are no barriers to your dreams that cannot be overcome. No. Oh, I love it. There are none. They love it. They might feel hard. It might be like having a pap smear, like, you know, but if you truly love it in your stomach, I only I sat with um, one of my mentors today and we're talking about life and I said, I sat down on the weekend and I was talking to an old friend I hadn't seen in six months and she said, what are you doing right now? And I described what I'm doing on like a weekly, daily, monthly basis and it hit me and I went, oh my God, I'm living my perfect life. Wow. You know, and to be able to at any age look back on even a month or a week and go, wow, like, and that doesn't mean, you know, life is a, is a goddamn chain of daisies I got four kids I got you know (laughs) there's plenty of dead daisies lying around (laughs) but when I look at what I get to do for my work that passion that burn in your belly like imagine feeling the burn in your belly every bloody day that's cool it's awesome it is awesome so that's what I would say nothing there is no barrier that cannot be overcome if it's truly to live your purpose yep can I add something as well Mm. For anybody that does want to have a go at the at the big change and you do find it's not what you want, it's okay. That is so true. You know, the amount of times, you'll laugh at this, the amount of times, and some people will say, some people will be listening, Mel, and going, well, if you have a plan B, then you mustn't really want plan A. I call bullshit on that. It's called practical. <laughs> like, you know. I love it. <laughs> but it's true. That's, yep. There's that whole big sort of motivational thing that yep. you only need a plan A because if you have a plan B, you're not invested in plan A enough. And yep. I get that. I don't, I don't have my I don't have my plan B on my wall or anything, but it is okay to make the change. Like me, so photography. I became a wedding photographer and I went, oh, totally not for me. I, be, you know, started a styling business and had it for 10 years and it doesn't mean I have to be it forever. So this change does not have to be forever, but if it lights you up, makes you a happier woman, a happier wife, a happier partner, a happier mum, a happier daughter, a happier sister, like everyone benefits from that. Amen. Oh, yeah. Into that, my friend. Well, thank you so, so much for coming and chatting with us. So where can we find more about you and your business, your book, where can we get your book from? 
and your see your reno show so if you just head to www.naomifinlay.com if you click on the learn more in the top right you can see everything we do everything we teach everything i write everything you can listen to everything you can watch our new farms to fortune show that's coming Ooh, up that sounds fabulous oh my farms gosh to fortune. farms to fortune empowering the everyday aussie smell wow absolutely so naomifinlay.com with a d so f-i-n-d-l-a-y Well, thanks, sister. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Pleasure, Mel. Thanks for listening to Hey Soul Sister with Mel Histon. What would help you on your crazy life journey? Email melissa at thesistercode.com.